The name Michael Clark might not be familiar to you, but a video he posted may ring a bell. Now there are a lot of fires going on right now in our country. Uh -huh. Was it planned? Here's something no. so crazy that it might be true. So if you haven't Probably been not. watching... So, Mike, put me in your head for a bit. You've been working in the field for several years, battling wildland fires, and then you see this TikTok that's basically a compilation of wildfire conspiracy theories. What was your first reaction? Mostly frustrated with the fact that it just seemed completely out there. Like, I don't know what they were trying to spark, what their motive was, but it was just simply not true. Why did you decide to post a reaction duet TikTok? The first video I came across was a video of uh, drone footage where they're drop doing prescribed burns, dropping it fire from the drone. And they're saying like, wake up America. They're, they're lighting these fires on purpose. And that one really kind of bugged me because it's what I do for work. But the second one I came across, the one that went a little bit more viral um, where fires were stopping at the borders. The only thing besides Corona and the election is fires that they're talking about. But is it yeah. not weird to you guys to know that the fires know when to stop at the border? Because it's mean, a US look, database you map you're looking at, zero not going to be reporting border. Canada fires. Look at all to me, that, that was just plain silly that fires obviously don't stop at the borders. But when I read the comments of people actually believing this and feeding into that misinformation, um, it really just made me, it really reached out to me, making me want to share my information saying, hey, here's the facts. You're looking at a U.S. map. You're not looking at the whole thing. Why do you think there's so much misinformation about wildfires? PolitiFact published tons of fact checks on Australia and West Coast fires this year. What is it about fires that make them ripe for false claims? I, I think mostly when people see this big plume of smoke, way off in the distance, they, their imaginations go wild. And it's easy to assume something when you, especially when you're not in that field, you, you don't know what's going on. You think it's raining over here, but you see over there, there's this is big fire. And I think for the, the fact is people just aren't in the situation. So they, they come to conclusions. Obviously misinformation is a big part of both of our jobs. What is the need for evidence-based, fact-based material? I, I think it's important that we all just, you know, take a second, look at the facts without just spreading, you know, false information out there. Like it's like it's because it's easy just to click link, share someone else um, without actually diving in there because it's, you know, it's entertaining that that video that she posted out there. It's entertaining to think, oh, fires are stopping at the borders. Wow. Let's share this with the world without actually diving in, doing the nerd work and studying up on why this is happening. I've had people that would steal our, our supply cash out, in a, out on a national um, event. Um, like a, we call them campaign fires when it's this big fire we're at. We have certain locations where, where we store like fuels for prescribed burns and stuff like that. They would steal the fuel and you know, I, I don't know what if they're just doing it for their own purpose, but or if they were conspiracists, you know, trying to prevent the spread of wildfire. I don't I don't know what what their thought was. Do you see a future in fact checking for yourself, like on the side? I, I mean, yeah, if it comes to, you know, my expertise, I, that's the thing, though. I, I, I'm not like a fire scientist. I, I never studied, you know, uh, fire science and stuff like that. I'm just a normal firefighter that saw some information that was obvious to me and other firefighters but when it comes to the public it, it's not common knowledge to them so i'm happy to share all that information that i know today i'm going to show you a great way to make a steak first you butterfly it put some bacon inside the steak put some butter inside the steak just squeeze it right out of your packet there then come over to your grill you've made out of cinder blocks a grate and some propane spray it with ham first Put your steak on there. Turn your propane tank on. Then you're going to want to douse it with gas. This is the important part. Light a flare and toss it over there. And run! It's pretty fun. It's an interesting uh, gig. I, I really enjoy out here wildland firefighting in Hawaii. 
Um, this is probably one of the greatest jobs I've ever had.